Ooh, what's up guys and welcome to our last TBU video of course this season being season 2 This is my wrap up of the of course season and it's just gonna be me talking and Talking quite a lot. I have no idea how long this video is gonna get but I just really want to showcase my thoughts and of course the season itself how great it has been and just people I want to thank and the, the team itself you know a, a pretty much an MVP list of the months I value the most to pretty much talk with the worst and just spread up and talk about the games um, I'm gonna talk about every one of them though I might not go into much detail with them but like I said it's gonna be me reminiscing and just enjoying the things that were obviously on par with what's going on and really before even starting to go too in depth I really want to thank everybody who has been supporting of course the Scandinavian Stufflands you guys have been awesome and you guys are the guys that are in the comments in every video who has been so supportive I can't really stress this enough every one of you um, special shout out to you Yvedifin and uh, I really really need to thank the two guys who definitely stood tall throughout this season being of course Ellis and Rob who Ellis was the one that helped me throughout the LBA with a few ideas and you know think about this you know juggle about this and uh, I knew that Rob was a good friend of Ellis and Rob was a very, very powerful player too in the small hunt. so it was very easy for me to ask him if he wanted to join and of course they too they, they both become co-coaches of Scandinavian Stoutlands and their planning was pretty much on point most of all the games that were on and we did really well there were always a backup plan and I really 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 enjoy that yeah. even if I plan to some extent well uh, I won't deny that they were definitely going out of the way to see the, the flaws of my team in every matchup and they they created something big and um, I am really really thankful for them both for actually standing tall for the complete season I mean we did kinda waver after the break I mean we went from a 3-1 to actually start losing and uh, they never wavered like when I fell down at that you know I didn't feel I could perform as well as I was hoping for that's not a sexual joke people sis <laughs> But they definitely, you know, they kept coming. They kept, they kept telling me, you know, that things gonna turn around. They, they, there is a plan. We're, we're not out of the woods yet. And uh, yeah, thanks to them, we made it so far as we did. And I did promise everyone here, uh, when the season was starting, that you know we are gonna make finals. Uh, I want to provide that content for everybody, and we did, which was awesome. I, I won't deny that I didn't think we would make it. So once things actually turned out, you know, we made playoffs, that was incredible. And uh, yeah, I mean, that was great. Uh, and also, I guess I'm gonna give one special follower a bit of a recognition, being of course Rana. Uh, so damn charming and supportive. And you know, being of course from the Scandinavian itself. Tack så jävla mycket. Really couldn't say that in another way. Um, it's been great having people, um, much like Rana, who just stood stood by me when things weren't going well either. Like there was some kind of underdog recognition going on with the Scandinavian stuff. I mean, both Shot and Shroom put me in the lowest support in power ranking. They didn't see the synergy of the team, and I felt that they didn't know hyper offensive teams, which probably got proven as it went on, but. Uh, uh, it was really frustrating knowing that the expert commentators didn't really see my my idea with the team and that really it didn't threw me off or anything but it did bother me that I needed to prove myself by battling not by team building which was well let's face it it, it, it is a hard cookie to um, swallow and um, but I think I proved myself and obviously they had their reasons to doubt me, but I'm glad I could prove them wrong as the seasons went on. So anyway, with really all of this said, I'm just going to bring about the whole team and um, talk about them. You know, my thought process were and how they performed and uh, just overall how happy I am that they're after the mods I did. 
So the first two are actually mods that never get the chance to be used. And I think that says more about my draft than anything because they were never really required. Uh, first of them being of course Pangoro. Pangoro just didn't. It didn't work. Um, it had a matchup where it could have done well. But the previous fighting type I drafted before him was a lot better. And I think Pangoro was just a pick I took because my Stoutland got picked late. Uh, I was really, really thinking of uh, drafting Stoutland. And when Gabe took Stoutland from me, Pangoro was just a filler so I can go to sleep because it was a really late draft. And uh, I think that was my overall response. And um, I did have Tyrantrum, for those who didn't know in my team. But once I saw the next month that I'm going to pick up being dropped, being of course Curem, I knew I had to get Curem. I didn't need Curem myself. Um, I only drafted it, so I didn't have to deal with it. Because I only, the only one I was going to face if I took that was, of course, uh, the monstrous Curem Black. But the regular Curem is actually quite dangerous. And um, while well, I didn't use Curem at all this season, and for that very reason, I didn't need it. I didn't need Ice Stab. I had Mars that could work with it. Uh, Curem basically became a bench so I could defend myself properly from it. That was my major <laughs> response. Uh, Curem is a bit of a faster ice type, which is something I do struggle against. And being, of course, having ice and earth power to it makes it quite well for my team. So actually snagging that before anybody could get it was um, not only was that important, it also made my team building for everybody much, much simpler. But with that said, let's go into the 11s that I actually used. First one we're gonna mention is Alakazam. Now, Alakazam, I'm not gonna lie, he's the least valuable player. He didn't score, or he didn't get any kill actually of the games I'm used him in. Uh, he, he scored himself two deaths though, and you might be thinking, uh, did I use him wrong or like that? No, um, he was a safety net from time to time and a late game sweeper. Though the thing were, when he was a late game sweeper, his abilities wasn't required because the overall team build was good enough to uh, not be used with him. And overall, when he actually needed to work well, I might have misplayed with him or he was forced into a position where it didn't work at all. And basically, he sucked. Um, I'm probably underselling Alex Hammer. It's a good mon, but with the mons I drafted before him, I did a lot better without him than I thought I would. The one afterwards is Shaman, so not too high on the list. Now, Shaman overall is not that bad. I use Shaman actually as much as I used Alakazam, but with a different result being that in every game Shaman was involved outside my first one uh, against the Bristol Beetle, Shaman actually won every game she was in. Uh, she scored two kills, died once, and that was actually against the Bristol Beetles. So the, the only game she died was the game that we lost. So Shaman has been a beacon of hope, but um, just didn't match up too well with the overall draft, and therefore is a bit lower, but Shaman overall as a Pokemon, freaking awesome. Using defensive Shaman or using supportive Shaman did, quite, did stir up a lot of trouble from the most draft that she was included, and she did really well, so I'm definitely going to try to draft a mod like this again because it was incredible using it. Followed up by, of course, uh, Shaman is uh, Kubalion. Now, Kubalion was a mod I thought would do a lot better than it ended up doing. With that said, uh, I did use Kubalion as much time like Shaman and Alakazam, but it actually got three kills and died four times. It died every game it was in. Kubalion was forced into kind of a weird role where um, it Oh, how do you say? It is good mixed. Uh, it did work against every team was used with. Um, definitely did a lot of things to a lot of teams. It, it didn't fall in vain. Usually it was used as a big last resort to break through a team with a good stab attack or just surviving overall. Uh, and like I said, it did a lot of damage to a lot of teams. But... Um, it was forced into kind of that weird role, mostly because I drafted another fighting type that was not only more flexible, but definitely could break through much better. Kubalion, though, 
having access to stealth rocks and volt switching and you really pivot a lot of teams and of course being of a defensive typing was valuable in the game he was in. But like I said, obviously he didn't work as well as I hoped, but that had nothing to do with uh, the mod itself, it just I had a mod that was slightly better for the role he was forced into, which obviously was showcased in the late season of this season, obviously. Coming up next is Volcarona, and yeah, what can I say about Volcarona? It was used in two games in before the season end, it was used three times I believe in total this season, and you wanna wonder why it was used so little? I wanna wonder that to myself, I really do. It was due to the TVU system at hand, it was hard to draft into my team, I couldn't draft uh, Volcarona till I actually got my Mega Dianchi uh, because I needed that mod to actually <laughs> they work really well together. So having Volcarona and not Mega Dianchi would make Volcarona less effective. Consider the way uh, my team spins, that is say not a lot, if anything I am only forced for defogging. So Volcarona is a bit lower because of the, the late way I drafted it and also the hardship that was drafting into the team. But when Volcarona was in a battle, it really wavered. It really, really stood tall against a lot of games. And he only got, I do believe, two kills and one death. And in my, of course, um, semi final, Volcarona did something magical and opened and paid the way up for, of course, me making finals. So there is really a big, big, big perk for Volcarona being so unique and it's so weird that it that was all that was required against the semi-final was that I had the bug monster wasn't drafted being both the one that is of course higher on this list and Volcarona had I not had them like I had the first game I might have done better if I had them is what I'm trying to say the reason Eric won the first game was because he had the right monster for it and when I had these two guys behind me much like Volcarona, things change a lot, so I'm really glad I drafted Volcarona, it was a great mod to have. Next one up is probably the mod I enjoyed the most I drafted, and that has been Drapion. Now Drapion itself uh, didn't get so much shine really, uh, but it was a very very flexible mod, it was used in a lot of different environments. Being of course having access to Sword Stance and Toxic Spike and being slightly more defensive than your average Mon with some good stab attacks, Drapion was showcased to put a lot of ferrets at bay uh, and also of course being that it is a slightly faster one made a few judgmental uh, speed ties that was really 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 important. Now we didn't kill a lot with it and it did die a lot but when it was used it was used to force a lot of team back. Um, a lot of the people here in the TBU or in D TBU in TBU didn't know how to deal with it efficiently, and it just stood tall against a lot of teams. I was really glad this mod was drafted. Um, my funniest moment is when I used a scarf one against Enzo. Um, the knockoffs against Enzo's team really, really, really threw him off, and uh, I was just so glad that it could be used so well. Uh, against it has toxic spy of course against Crip and it did really well there too. I might have turned this battle around had I preserved Drapion better. Uh, but in all honesty, very powerful, very flexible mon, and I encourage anybody who hasn't used Drapion in League to do just so because it was a blast. So next one up is Gengar, and Gengar didn't get as much kill as I was hoping for. But what Gengar did with a lot of teams when Gengar was used was really break asunder the cores, like defensive cores didn't stand a chance most of the time against Gengar. Gengar being of course of a really, really nice speed tier forced a lot of players in the TBU to, um, saying that again, in the TBU, TBU to actually switch around against it and usually he got a kill by it or made sure that the whole team was wheeled down. There were a lot of battles when Gengar just did a lot of damage to a lot of mobs before falling and basically forced the land or the next one to come in to sweep. Um, definitely the games I'm talking about the most are of course against Sis and of course against Freedomium. Freedomium definitely got the worst of it being that he finally got an early lead only to get swept by the NG which was probably 
one of the tougher games for him, but he had one tougher <laughs> that Eric, of course, holds, and I can't really take that away from him. But yeah, like I said, didn't really get as much kill as I was hoping for. I think he only got one and died three times, was used four times. Um, nothing big to it. He was always forced to fall and didn't, like I said, take a lot of kills. I think the only kill he got was against a Richie Steel. That's really all it did. But like I said, Gengar was mostly used late season and um, the perk was that while he didn't get kills, he did a lot of damage to the teams that tried to get him and he was really helpful for the overall team and structure. Um, so yeah, Gengar, impressive Pokemon, really is. Too bad he was fighting with Drapion for, of course, the Team Supreme Beam when it comes to Poison Stab, which made it kind of hard to use them both properly. Usually, I was forced to choose either, unlike for Trip Games where I fall. Next one up is probably the funniest draft I did. Um, I had no intention of getting Heracross, and I didn't use Heracross a lot. I used Heracross three times, and he got, I do believe, five kills and two deaths. So, it, yeah, the only game I think he didn't die in was... Uh, no, actually, he died... To, yeah, um, the only game he didn't die in was against Gabe of the time I used him. But Heracross was turning out to be very, 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 very flexible. Uh, Moxie is a good thing to have. Guts is a good thing to have. Having resistance to Earthquake and other fighting attacks, yes, please. Um, did really well. Um, did work semi well in the, um, in my semi final, and uh, obviously falls to a uh, tanger of air lace, which you know I can't even be mad about. That's awesome. But in all honesty, I think Heracross made my team a bit more aggressive because a Heracross stabs just are so good. Um, it has a very very extreme move pool, and um, just overall, Heracross is a man I definitely had no intention of drafting, but I'm so glad I did because the thing he brought to the table were just pressure, instant pressure, and that's something you can't go without, so Heracross is definitely one of my uh, more unexpected picks and probably my dress, dress best pick I did, and that's really all I can say. Now we come to, I think, the four that really, really stood tall this draft, and they're gonna start off with Thunderous, and my god, Thunderous. Uh, was my first pick um, of this league and I didn't use him as much as I thought I would but what Thunders did was bring in that niche speed tier 111 Thunders was used four times, got five kills and died three times now might be wondering why he died so many times well freaking T-Wave and you have no idea how important these kinda clutch T-Waves were now of course, I will say that I should have used Thunders a lot smarter in a lot of the games that he was used in, but you have no idea how good Thunders were when the Thunder Wave matters. Um, one of those being really in the semi-finals where he actually T-Wave the Tarantrum against the Bristol Bidoofs. Really important. My god, I was so glad that I didn't die there. I'm just <laughs> but um, yeah, Thunders was usually used in a situation where he needed to stop the opposing Pokemon and then just make sure that the other ones could stay. And I think it did that just right. And I was so glad that Thunders was drafted. I probably wouldn't have made it this far without him. Uh, and he actually is the second sweeper of, or the second best killer of my team. Which should tell a lot about the mods that comes hereafter, how good they were at the killing spree. But Thunders, um, not regretting that decision. Definitely one of the best mons I picked, but he did barely make the top three because the top three are first one mentioned here. Obviously, is Empoleon. Uh, I have no idea how Empoleon got so good as she got, but my God! Um, first of all, I should mention Empoleon probably would have been my second best sweeper or actually killer in the game had it not been that the um, playoff matches are not included in the kill list. I used Empoleon six times as a potential stealth rocker most of the time and defogger. Uh, he won four of those. He killed four months. He died four times. Uh, or she died four times. But at the quarterfinals, 
Empoleon was just standing. Like, Empoleon was incredible against this. Actually, twice. But, the, of course, first one being a bit more shaky on my side. But the second game with Empoleon against this. My god. It just was never going down. And I do believe she got three kills that game. And um, against them um, in the semi final against Bristol Beetle, same kind of thing. Empoleon was not falling. Um, he did eventually go down against the Tarantrum. Took a head smash, mind you guys. And just was wow. Empoleon definitely was an underrated mom before this. And afterwards, I really, really like Empoleon. Um, it just. The typing was so helpful, like I said, um, or like everybody has been stating really, it does lack recovery, but who needs recovery when you don't take damage in the first place? So I'm really glad I used Empoleon, and uh, I have so many fond memories of situation and movesets that just was so weird, but with Empoleon it just made all kind of sense, and yeah, Cryomill, as I called her, is definitely my top three girl, if anything. So, with only two mods left, second one being Landorus. Landorus is probably the one I have to include here. It was definitely between him and, of course, the first place um, holder. But Landorus is only here because it was used the most of every team or every Pokemon I have. Uh, Landorus has been a part of seven games, including playoff. He actually made, I do believe, nine games out of eleven. So. That really, really should say something about Landorus. It was ideally my best mon as it comes to both this defensive response, obviously, but also having, you know, 145 base attack means that you are going to get hurt. Uh, earthquake hurt so much. If a Pokemon wasn't floating, it was dying. Um, <laughs> against Josh, which was actually week 8, it did really, really, really well too, being of course a combination of Knock of Earthquake. And just, I usually used um, Rock Polish, and um, I had a Power Herb Fly set against Bristol Beetle for week 1, which sadly wasn't showcased. I think that would have been working really nicely. But as it stands, you know, it's okay. Shit like that will happen. But um, Landers just being extremely flexible, fast, and hard hitting. Uh, it was always coming back for more. Why it did got swat like a fly a few times, Yasha very solved the worst issue, and definitely against a guy like Sis, for example, where it, due to Yasha Berry, Landers actually successfully swept him uh, late game or mid game, basically. Was never forced to be switched out, which was just awesome. And yeah, I mean, I can't really say much more. Uh, Landers was, with all, sa all said and done, a perfect defensive wall, a perfect sweeper, a perfect tank, and a perfect Pokemon in all sense, but he is not at least as perfect as my number one pick, of course, be freaking Dianchi guy, I mean, come on, it, it's not like this was out of the, <laughs> or that unexpected, Mega Dianchi was only used five times, in those five times, she got 14 kills, and died, of course, I do believe, uh, Three times, and those three times were, of course, the times we lost. Um, I really have so many fond memories of Dianchi. Both the way Dianchi falls is probably one of the funnier parts. I've lost Dianchi twice, I believe, to bullshit. Uh, I did lose Dianchi to a freaking barely live uh, power against Enzo, and I lost it Mega Dianchi to a hidden power steal <laughs> from um, a young Mega. But that's the only two kills that stands out, and of course, when I lost against like, Bristol Beetle the first week is where I lose Dianchi too. Outside of that, Mega Dianchi freaking rocked. Uh, even in the playoff, Dianchi was just a presence. Um, I didn't use it against Sis because I had other mods for it. Against Bristol Beetle, finally, uh, it did play a similar game like previously, but did fall in the end against the same mon. But that was okay, because Volcarona could solve the rest. <laughs> And then in the last game, I couldn't use it. Trip Steam was simply too much with having two priority bullet puncher, which made Dianchi kind of hard to use. But I think I proved everybody that if you can't stop Dianchi, Dianchi will stop you. And um, it was definitely showcased. Uh, I was really glad to draft Dianchi overall. Uh, it was 
kind of easy to use. It's definitely one of those glass sweepers that you only need the stabs and potentially filler moves and some way of outspeeding your mom. And that's GG. There are very few mods you can take a stab attack from Mega Denji. That is what 160 base attack and special attack is all about. So the Denji, number one pick from the Scandinavian stuff this season. Now, with of course all of this said, I do kind of realize this video is getting quite lengthy. So I was thinking instead of actually talking about the individual game as the game went on, and uh, obviously they are linked <laughs> down below as a TBU video. I do kind of realize that we're still kicking at 25 minutes and I really, really should just talk about, you know, what I thought was really fun this season and reminisce a bit. And um, so the, the videos are linked down below and uh, I feel that it's, it's for the best. I didn't see how long this video was really getting and uh, I had so much things to say about all the mods I'm drafting, didn't I? So, I will say this, I thought that my last three games in the finals were probably the more, most intense one. Uh, against this, I had a blast, really. It was very tough, and it was really fun seeing that. Um, not that I grew stronger, because I didn't, but more that uh, I played defensively well. Um, I definitely tried, I was momentum killer that game throughout this match. And it paid off, it paid off great. And the same thing was with Bristol b dupes where I had that vision from the start that I couldn't play as aggressive as I wanted to. Uh, it was once our team fell apart that I knew that that was a place that I could try to get at. And it seems it took some time for me to pull it out properly. And, uh, you know, we won eventually, which was really cool. But then we come to the final where, I, I will say this, I think we had the right team in mind. I think everything was perfect, but Trip was just crazy enough to pull a stunt like that, with of course being three scoffers, and it paid off. It was a really, really short game where he had, for his own intention, he had a team that wasn't gonna fall apart. I mean, stamina-wise, that team was not gonna last 20 turn, and um, had I maybe suspected that, things might have turned differently. I, I went for, with of course, Bellis and Rob, we decided to bring something similar we were brought before. And um, I was really, really surprised the way Trip played. I really was. I wasn't mad about the loss, though. I really wasn't, because in the end, you know, it that kind of planning, you know, really... It was either gonna make it or break it for him, and it was really in his hands to pull that off properly. Had I went for a more defensive team, things might have turned really different, but there was no way I was gonna do that, and um, I... I, I really can't hold it against him. I thought it was a very, very nice plan. <laughs> and besides that, you know, my, I think my funniest game was against Freedomion. Uh, it was more because we got that six sweep with uh, Dianchi. Dianchi always got a lot of kills uh, when it broke through, but um, it was one of those games where um, it just fell in place. Everything just fell in place. Um, we got the breakthrough we wanted to, he didn't bring a team that could deal properly with ING and uh, it just worked. I was fairly glad it worked the way it did because I will say that Predominium is, from time to time, he is a good player but this was definitely a situation he he missed out on. Um, and that, that of course brought Dayenshi back on the map, you know, against Bristol Beat of was just not a one, one time thing. Seven weeks later, the same situation actually occurs, and uh, I think it had to do with me playing a lot of OU with the vein. She actually get a feel for her and starts using her more properly and more structured. And uh, yeah, I was that was probably my funniest game, together with um, Sinister Save Light, to be honest. Because fuck that shit, that was probably one of the few games where I felt I played bad, but it was also in conjunction with that I think he did some good calls too. He definitely um, missed a few opportunities to break through, but I didn't get a, catch up on him, and um, that's why he wins that game. Uh, I could have taken a risk in the end, you know, I still had the game to some extent, but I just played very, very bad. I missed out on the opportunities where I should have done much better. Uh, I do like that game though, because it also showcased that no matter how much you plan for a team, you really need to be in the right state of mind to uh, to pull that off, and uh, 
that was definitely showcased in that video. And I was, like I said, I was extremely frustrated back then. But what had more to do with that, I was disappointed at myself. And um, I'm so glad that that didn't have any genuine repercussion. Um, and like I said, we do win our last two games, which does mean that we made playoff anyway, which I thought for a while that we wasn't going to do. And there was no way we are going to make that. But hey, we did. Um, but yeah, I mean, outside of that, you know, Season 3 is in May. And I hope Ellis and Rob are as available and as professional as they were in previous season because I do love their assistance when I'm building teams. And I don't know how to, um, what I'm going to draft this time. Um, probably more in style with what I usually do than just bringing a powerhouse team. Though I like this powerhouse team, I really do. But I think I need to have some smarter structure. And um, hmm, outside of that, what else can one say, really? Um, I mean, it was, it's was it been so fun uh, hanging with these guys in the TBU. Said again, the TBU. Um, yeah, it's, it's been great. Um, a lot of fun stuff is happening. And they, you know, all the memes, all the jokes, inside jokes between us. Uh, it made this a lot more lively than it usually does. We had the usual drama um, for some reason. One would believe with a team of um, 10 gents that stuff like that wouldn't happen, but they do. And that sucks. <laughs> but yeah, outside of that, hmm, I don't know. I am, I'm really looking forward to Season 3. And if you guys want to apply for Season 3, uh, make sure to do just that on their Twitter channel, on, of course, Twitter. Uh, we're looking for a lot of more people this time, and I'm looking for a lot more people to beat, so, you know, if you want to get your head sent into it, you know, that's, that, this is your chance of doing just so. Yeah, that's, that's solid. Uh, no, but everybody, really, from the bottom of heart, thank you so much for this season. Every follower, every viewer, every trainer, every supportive person throughout the Scandinavian Southland season, you guys rock. And I could have done this without you. So with all that said, I want to tell you guys that the sky, of course, is the limit. And I see you in season three. Until then, take care. Bye.